No employees. Why no employees? Uh, why employees? Like I will have a couple of agents. Ah, there might be a couple of times where if there was somebody I would bring in as like a CMO, if I had an agency that was doing stuff and I could get somebody in. But even then, um, if you have one person that has all the keys to the castle and then, you know, that they're hit by a bus or they go to a competitor, or I don't know. You can't have one person that has you by the short and curlies, right? You have to understand what's going on within that organization and be able to replace anybody on Monday. Right. Um, and so if, if I could scale this to where, you know, fulfillment's done by a fulfillment center, I've got a couple partner agencies that do the work that I need them to do as far as Facebook, Instagram, paid advertising, Thing. And then the stuff that I'm good at, I'll do. Um, right. But I, I like managing vendors versus employees after 23 years. Got it. It's it's. Um, I don't know. Would you say it's like more cutthroat that way because it's just the business uh, arrangement is more clear. Uh, you know, it's it's funny, and it might be just I, I wasn't a good leader at the beginning, but it's easier for me to hold them accountable. I think that it's harder for me to have a, a confrontation to an employee that I see every day and I form that yeah. relationship with or, you know, like family or friend and, you know, versus uh, if I'm looking at my agency today, I'm looking at the report, right? This is just, this is data. Um, you know, it's not a opinion-based decision. These are based on facts right. and we can discuss if things aren't going well and we can try to write the situation. You know, I'm not um, wanting to like hire a new agency every couple of weeks. I believe I want to find an agency that's going to work with me forever. I yeah. believe in partners versus vendors, but it's just easier to hold them accountable. I think because it's a, it's an external relationship and we've got a contract. We've got a really clear contract on our expectations. Yeah. And that's, and it could be, the uh like you said on the expectations but it's really clear on the function right like you do this thing this thing does not happen you know like we try to fix it and then on to the next one we're with employees maybe they you know they can kind of hide abscond you know uh certain information and uh i was taking out the trash bro that's why i didn't answer the phone <laughs> yeah and i found that they didn't have the same sense of urgency that i did and for years i wanted them to and then i had the realization that well, if they had the same urgency and drive and ownership that you did, they're just going to start their own agency, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to work for you. Um, and many of them did. And I love that about, <laughs> you know, Young and Hungry, uh, Aquamarine. There's some cool agencies that are old Zen manners that are, that are kicking ass. Uh, and that's, for me, that's a sense of pride. Whereas 20 years ago, the first person I ever fired, this is a, I haven't thought of this story in years, uh, his name is Newman. And uh, I fired Newman uh, for, he effed up a huge project, um, didn't work on it. It was uh, one of our first big swings. It was with level three. Uh, so we had an in in there and we were doing a big presentation for their voice over IP. We we're doing an animated demo. And I came in and he had not, um, it looked like he'd spent an hour on it. It was shit. So it was actually my birthday. Uh, it was like two in the afternoon. I pulled an all-nighter. This is, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So I pull an all-nighter at like six in the morning. I'm ready to go. This is back in the days that we actually printed and matted our presentations, right? And had them on boards. Yeah. And he had fucking printed a hundred DJ CDs on my printer. <laughs> and so when I went to print the presentation the next day, it was out of ink and I just oh. lost it. So I fired Newman and then... A couple of weeks later, I just had this feeling like, ah, oh, he's, he's using my proposal or like something, you know, something. So I created a Yahoo email address. Again, this was the gorilla days. I reached out to him to pretend to be a dry cleaner, uh, needs a website and he sends me back my proposal. <laughs> um, so I, I set up a meeting, I meet him at a coffee shop no way, on dude. Him. and now uh, I'll, uh, anybody that's on this podcast or here, we have a, a document. It's called Zen Man Docs to Share. It's our contractor agreement. It's our proposal. It's everything we work for hire. It's everything we've ever spent tens of thousands of dollars to create. I'd rather have creatives have that than you know be able to to get paid on their contracts and go pay an attorney. No, no offense. I've got a good attorney personally. Stan Doid is amazing, but I share those. Whereas you know back then it was like this is mine. This is mine. And the truth of the matter is. I bit that shit off like four proposals that I downloaded from the internet, you know, in 1998. So it wasn't like I crafted this, you know, masterpiece that was my, you know, design, discover, deploy. I didn't come up with that shit, right? People right. were doing that forever. In fact, we changed it because it's so played out. 